In the last video, we talked about some of the different types of geometry that our universe could have on very, very large scales, such that they satisfied the cosmological principle. They had to be homogeneous, so they had to look the same at all points, and had to be isotropic. There couldn't be any special directions. And we had three different kinds of geometries that we could have. The first is the positively curved geometry, so which looks like the surface of a sphere, so this is positive. We had a flat geometry, which uh, is probably most comfortable to most people, uh, flat geometry. And we had a geometry that is negatively curved. And this kind of looks like, if I can draw it, the, the surface of a saddle. So we have a negatively curved geometry. Negative. And these are the three kinds of geometries that we could have. But what's uh, especially interesting is that these geometries can expand and contract. So I could start with, if I have a positively curved uh, universe, I could start with one that is uh, very small, and it can expand dynamically into something, uh, something much larger. In the same way, I could have a have a flat geometry that starts out very small, and it can expand into a larger geometry. Now, one of the very common misconceptions, I mentioned this in the last video, but I really want to hammer home the point, is that when we talk about the expansion of the universe, it's not expanding into anything. Uh, especially with uh, this common picture of our, our positively curved surface of the sphere universe, we might want to say that well, there's some higher dimensional empty space out here that it's expanding into. But I can completely describe the geometry of this space, of this curved space, without ever referring to any higher dimensional space. So when I say the universe is expanding, I can simply say that the geometry of my universe is changing. So, so I really want to make that, that a solid point. So what we want to do in this video is talk a little bit more about what this kind of expansion looks like. And we are going to get Einstein to help us with this. So Einstein is going to uh, kind of depict my universe and we're going to see what happens when this universe expands. So let's say I start, I'm sitting right at the bottom corner here and this is going to be the point where I'm observing the universe expanding from. So during a certain amount of time the universe expands from this size to to this full size. Now what has happened to specific points? Like let's say we look at his tie. Originally I saw it being this far away but as the universe expands eventually I will see it as this far away. So during that amount of time it's expanded a certain, a certain distance away from me. Now if I look at a more distant point let's say I look at uh, this tuft of hair at the near the top of his head then I notice that this more distant point will appear to have moved much farther away from me. So this nearby point uh, moved a certain distance away from me, from here to here, but this more distant point moved even farther away. So we get this idea that more distant points move faster. So uh, more distant points move faster. And as I look at more and more uh, points as they expand away, I will notice this trend. So nearby points move only slowly away from me, but distant points move away from me much faster. Now one thing that you might say is, I thought you said that there was no center to the expansion, there should be no special points. From my perspective here, it looks like I'm at a very special point and everything seems to be expanding away from me. Doesn't that uh, go against the cosmological principle. Well, let's say we did the exact same thing, but let's say we didn't weren't uh, standing on this point. Let's say we were uh, standing on his eye. So, let's say we, we start on his eye, and as the universe expands, I'm going to just ride along with it. So, the, that eye is going to be at the exact same place the entire time. What does this expansion look like? Well, again, I can look at various points uh, in this space. So let's say I look at his ear, and originally it was this far away from me, and in that same amount of time, 
it has moved a certain distance away. I guess that's kind of hard to see, but you can uh, kind of see the arrow pointing there. And then I can maybe look at his tie again and say, during this uh, certain length of time, the tie has moved that distance. And what I'll notice is in both of these cases, all the points around me seem to be moving away. And more distant points are moving faster than uh, points that are nearby me. So I see, notice that his ear is fairly close to me, and it will only move a small amount of distance. The tie is farther away from me, and it'll move away faster. So in both of these cases, we see exactly the same kind of expansion around our observing point. So each person is going to see the expansion in exactly the same way. And this is what we would expect with a homogeneous universe. So to finish this, I just want to reiterate a couple of the key points that we've been looking at in this video uh, and clarify a couple of uh, common misconceptions. So the first thing we notice is that there is no center uh, to this expansion. Whichever point that I decide to start at to observe the expansion, I will see the expansion uh, work in exactly the same way. The second is that there is no, nothing outside that we're expanding into. So we're not expanding into anything. We're not expanding into anything. There's no higher dimensional space that we are moving into or anything like that. We are simply observing the change in the geometry of the large scale structure of our universe. The next thing that we notice is that if I am at a if I'm looking at a point that's nearby and watch it expand away, it won't be moving away as quickly as a more distant point. So the more distant you are, the faster your uh, your expansion. So more distant, more distant equals faster movement. faster movement due to the expansion of the universe. And we can actually uh, describe this mathematically very easily. We say that the velocity of some object that's moving away from me is equal to some value h. I don't know what h is, but we'll multiply that value by the distance to that object. So if I'm at a larger distance, then my velocity is going to be faster. If I'm looking at a point that's farther away, it's going to be receding away from me at a greater velocity. And this is referred to as Hubble's law. Hubble's law. And this H is actually called the Hubble parameter. And we're going to look at this in much more detail in the next video. I just kind of want to introduce that as, as, uh, as just a precursor to the next video. But the last thing that I want to mention is that when we're talking about this expansion, we are talking about the expansion of the large scale structure of the universe. And that means if I have a small object, like a star or a planet or a person, or even a galaxy, so let's say I have, have some galaxy here, then this galaxy is small enough compared to, compared to the size of the universe that the expansion of the universe isn't going to be a dominant effect in the uh, evolution of this object. The main thing that's going to dominate it is its own mass, and that changes the geometry around itself. So all those times that I've been saying large-scale structure, uh, it's not, it's saying we're assuming the universe is smooth, but a galaxy is not a smooth object. So if I have two galaxies that are, that are close by each other and the universe is expanding, the galaxies themselves aren't really going to be expanding. What is actually expanding is the space that's in between them. So if I have this galaxy, then it won't be that this entire picture blows up, it'll be that the space in between these galaxies is what has actually expanded. So you don't have to worry that the expansion of the universe is going to pull the Earth away from the Sun, or at least not until the expansion of the universe gets much, much more rapid than it is right now.
if we're looking on small enough scales, and even a galaxy is considered a small enough scale in this case, the expansion of the universe only affects the space in between the galaxies. So, so that's kind of the last point that I wanted to mention, and we're going to talk more about the expansion of the universe, how we observe it, and Hubble's law in the next video.